Hey everybody, this is Nuke, the Widow's son. Uh, I'm back. We're, uh, we've traded in the 2014 ST Limited. Uh, that was the last one we were working on. Um, I knew I said I was going to do a bunch more videos, but uh, we got uh, uh, an itch to get a new beautiful spider. Uh, my wife was not comfortable on the old one. Uh, this one is much more comfortable for her. She likes this one a lot better. This is the 2019 uh, F3 Limited. Uh, it's more of a cruiser style, which is more comfortable for her. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's in this gorgeous Phoenix orange metallic, which uh, is very reminiscent of one of my favorite Harley colors, the um, uh, Tequila Sunrise, which was only available in 2012. Very exclusive color. This really reminds me of that. It's got a it's, it's a nice, pretty orange. It's got a gold pearl coat to it anyway. It's gorgeous. So that's, uh, that's something else. Anyway, uh, what we're doing today uh, is we are going to replace the rear turn signals, which are um, incandescent, and we're going to add um, the LED turn signals from Super Bright LEDs. Um, and I really recommend getting uh, all the L all your LEDs from them. Uh, they're a great place. They're reasonably priced. Shipping is excellent, and if you go get them around the holidays, they're usually 10 to 15 percent off. Uh, that's where I get all my stuff. Anyway, um, we uh, we got these. I actually wound up getting these bulbs for the um, the ST. However, anybody that uh, knows uh, anything about the ST, the RS, is that they're very very small. Turn signals, the housings are very small. And uh, once I got these bulbs, uh, they actually wound up being too big for the housing. So I had to, we, I wound up storing them. I was going to send them back, but they were only, I think they were like $4 or something like that. So I wound up hanging on to them. And when we got the new F3, I was very delighted to find out that the, they used the same bulb. However, the housing is much bigger now and it will accommodate these larger bulbs. And I'm going to show you which bulbs we're using. These are the BAU 15 S, uh, a 18 T. Um, here is the box. Um, they can be ordered from Super Bright LEDs um, under that part number. And I've already put the other one in, so I want to show you real quick what they look like uh, before we get started because I've done one side already. Um, and I'm going to do the other side on, on, on camera uh, because, once again, uh, Canadian engineers have shown that they, uh, they don't work on the bikes. They make them and they don't work on them. So I've run into a challenge that I want to help you solve. Um, I'm sure there's probably another elegant way to do it. However, I found an easy way, and hopefully this will help you if you ever have to change your turn signals um, so that you can um, you can figure out how to do that. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and turn the bike on. It's gonna I'll get it started. Uh, which you, what I'll show you is the difference between the LED signals and the incandescent signals, and you can see uh, what uh, the difference is between the two and why I think the upgrade uh, is worth it. All right, so anyway, uh, we got it started. I'm not going to start the bike up, but uh, you want to go around the back. We'll uh, go ahead and show you. Just focus on the uh, tail lights there. I'll start the uh, left side, and you can see the left side, and then compare it to the right side, and you can see that the right side is both brighter and also fills the space a lot cleaner. Um, it's a, a much brighter indication, and it's going to be a lot easier to see. Um, so uh, this is why I think it's a really good upgrade. It's super inexpensive. And uh, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you it's easy to do. Now, getting rid of the fast flash is going to be pretty easy. Um, I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so we're going to get right into it. So um, I have a page printed off here. I do have the um, electronic version of the manual. I just purchased that. Uh, we do have the page here. The directions are not excellent, however, it does show how to do this, so we're going to jump right into it. What you have to do is you have to open the saddlebag, and you run into your first problem, which is, um, by the way, these are all Torx 30. I real, they, they carried over into the new models that all of these Torx screws are going to be T30 Torxes. Now, the issue that I ran into immediately was uh, you have to remove this Torx and this Torx and this push pin. And what that'll do is that'll allow you to remove this housing. Now, if you want to remove the housing completely, what you have to do is you have to remove this lower uh, uh, shield. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you that you can do that without this. Um, but anyway, the very first challenge I ran into is that 
if you have the limited, the T model makes this much easier, but if you have the limited, you can see I can barely stick two fingers in here to make this clearing. Obviously, you can't stick a tool in there. So what I had to do is I had to use some uh, redneck engineering. Uh, I had to get a T30 uh, bit that would go into a magnetic screwdriver, uh, which fits in here, and then use a trusty pair of pliers. Hold down. And if you have some decent finger strength, which I do not so much after my accident, but uh, there we go, it will come out, okay? So this is now removed. So we'll take this out, put that in there. Um, I do recommend that if you do this a lot, go ahead and get yourself a pair of um, push pin pliers. Um, I don't have push pin pliers, so I'm gonna very, very gently lift this up, pull this out, Go to the first stop, and then you can go ahead and wiggle this the rest of the way. Well, come out that way, and then you have to very, very gently get this out the rest of the way. Okay, something to note that I found on the other side. This black tab here, actually, if you can see in the hole, you can see it's actually a retainer clip. Um, this is what connects this portion or this housing uh, to the bag housing. If you're not careful, you can actually lose that. Okay, and then we just use our regular... Uh, T30 wrench. Okay, something to remember is that the one on top here is the one with the washer. The one on the bottom does not. Now, once you've done that, again, being very careful not to lose this, I dropped this on the other one, had to fish it back out. Uh, once you've done that, this will actually separate. And you can see here, this is the turn signal and all you have to do is give it a quarter turn which direction it is a quarter turn and it comes out and there is enough lead on it that you can go ahead and pull it out again same thing for the bulb push quarter turn it comes out okay so we're going to install our new bulb which is the led very important this is the bau 15 um, the thing that makes this special it's not a um, regular um, 1156, which is what some people think they need to put in there. An 1156, if you look very carefully, an 1156 has a 180 degree uh, pins on the side. This is actually 120 degrees. They're slightly offset on one side. Um, these are specific, so you have to buy the BAU 15 um, for uh, that particular post configuration. And you'll see on the um, the bulb receptacle that you'll see it's a 15 it's a 120 degree offset and not a 180 degree offset like your 1156 would be so you line up the correct 120 sorry it's on this it's, it's these two here uh, you line up your 120 push and turn and it's now installed so what we're going to do now is just fish this back in here line up our arms quarter turn lock back into place Okay. Now again, this is this is what, I, and I just did what I said. Don't do. Uh, it's in here. Fortunately, there's enough area. Okay, this is what I was talking about. This is this is what actually this this push pin will will go into in order to um, connect this here. If you if it falls out, it's no big deal. I'm actually glad it fell out. So if yours falls out, you can see how to put it back in. If you look on this side, there's a slot, a slot here. It just goes back in, pointing down. It points down towards the inside of the bag, and you can see that it makes a place where when you put this back together, the pin goes in. And what I like, what I did on the other side is I actually did this side first so that I could secure that pin, and I don't want to lose it again. There it is. Okay, and we're going to push that back in. Okay, now this is secured. We can go ahead and put the rest of the lights in. I'm sorry, the rest of the bolts in. Always remember, hand start every bolt. That's just a mechanics guide because you, it prevents cross-threading. This one you don't want to torque down real hard. Uh, this particular bolt, I believe, is, has a plastic backing. I don't believe this goes into metal, so be careful when putting this in. Not even a cork, not even a tenth of a grunt. Just get that so it's snug. And again, the top one 
goes in the same way it was removed. Hopefully not crooked. technical issue there had to line it up I didn't want to spend a lot of time on video trying to figure that out but here we go again this is a very painful process of getting it down by hand tightness and then finishing it carefully with the pliers now I know that uh, what you we could do because I don't have this tool uh, but what you can do is they make uh, Allen wrenches, 90 degree Allen wrenches that have Torx heads. Uh, I will probably be getting one now that I know that I need one. Um, it is kind of a pain in the butt, but um, to have to buy a special tool for one particular thing, but usually that's what I wind up doing. Um, those particular tools are gonna wind up being pretty inexpensive. Um, I could probably order it on Amazon, although by the time I get it. It'll probably just be worth me going to the auto parts store, Napa, or one of the other auto parts stores, and just grabbing it. <clears throat> all right, so we're all done. We're going to turn it on if I remember right. Um, all we have to do is turn the hazards on and leave them on for a few seconds. As you can see, those LEDs look great in there. They really fill up the space there. They look particularly good at night. All right, anyway, we'll figure out the procedure. We'll, we'll figure out how to get that out. I know there is a procedure for getting the, uh, for getting the flashers to stop flashing fast. Um, it has to do with turning on the hazards. I don't remember if it's three times or five times, and then, I don't know, I'll look it up and I'll figure it out. But anyway, um, this is how I have found uh, to change the uh, t uh, turn signals. Another advantage to LEDs, you never have to, turn, you never have to change them again. Um, the incandescents will burn out. If yours ever burns out, now you have a procedure to do it. Uh, I'm really astonished at the lack of um, information on the um, um, repair procedures for the F3, for any, any of the Can-Ams, to be honest with you. Um, I know the Monster does a lot of stuff. Um, kudos to him for doing that. But I'll, his stuff really only applies to um, the parts that he makes. So um, I'm more of a shade tree mechanic. I like to do uh, work on the bike. Um, so uh, I like to make these videos, especially if there's no resources easily available on the internet. So I hope you like this video. Um, I'm going to try to make some more. Uh, this is really a fresh canvas. We're going to add a lot of things to here to, to this bike. Um, we haven't really done much to it yet. We added a um, phone holder to it. Um, that's really nice. We like that a lot. The BRP Connect, we are not at all impressed with. We really don't like it. Uh, there's a couple of other things with the bike that we're working on, uh, the dealer and Can-Am with that are really kind of uh, bad. Uh, in particular, um, the 2019s, if you look at the mirrors, the F3Ts and Limiteds for 17 and 18, had the turn signals in the mirror, which were actually fantastic. I have no idea, none whatsoever. I have no idea why Can-Am decided that they were gonna move the turn signals from the mirrors and put them in the same housing as the, um, I guess, what, I think they're not daytime running lights officially, I've been, I've been um, educated on. Um, they are uh, some other kind of marker light. Um, the problem is, is that um, in the United States, when you have a housing that has a daytime running light in it, which is really what this is, um, this light is supposed to extinguish when you use the turn signals. And unfortunately, uh, that is not what happens. So if you look, um, these turn signals will, or these indicator lights will stay on while the turn signal's on. And the problem with that is, is that, especially here in Tennessee, we have issues with um, distracted drivers. Uh, people really don't pay attention to what they're doing, and the reason that that um, driving light is supposed to extinguish is because it makes it a lot easier to see the flashing light. It makes it a lot more noticeable. 
Um, the fact that there's a white backlight behind the flashing light uh, makes it a lot less safe and a lot less noticeable. Um, I've contacted K&M about it. They're not really interested. They didn't seem interested anyway. Um, I contacted the dealer about it. They are much more interested and they're going to try to push the issue with K&M. Um, I've contacted the uh, uh, National uh, uh, Highway Transportation Safety Administration. They're interested as well, so they're going to be looking into it. Um, anyway, so it's a little premature to talk about that, but uh, I do want to say that this is a safety issue, I think, that uh, needs to be addressed by Can-Am, and uh, hopefully some other people will contact Can-Am and, and express their concerns as well. Uh, no idea why they took it out of the mirrors. The mirror is an excellent place to have a turn signal. Uh, it's high up, it's visible, um, and it's uh, separated from all the other lights. Anyway, so uh, the only other thing that we've done to this so far is we've added the, um, the charging uh, port for the... Um, uh, battery tender. Um, it is connected to the battery. We don't have the uh, panel out, but it was very simple. It's just got ring terminals and we wound up routing it here. We haven't really found a good place for it yet without actually drilling into the frunk. I think what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to wind up drilling a hole somewhere in the frunk and we're going to run the leads through, wind up putting a grommet in there for uh, to make it uh, waterproof again. So uh, just a couple things. That's all that we've really done to it so far, but we're going to wind up doing more. And as we do more, we're going to try to record it. Hopefully uh, you guys will be interested in watching it. Um, anyway, let me know if you have any comments on this. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next time.